Two Fridays ago, Olaf and I shot the video about the Sony noise cancelling headphones and the Bowers noise cancelling headphones. And then the next day, I got on a plane and went to Malaga for five days. And on the Monday, I woke up in Malaga to announcements from Focal that they had just announced their first Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphone. I was like, you bastards. Like, I've just shot this video about the Sony and the Bowers, and now you've thrown this into the mix. So I knew that when I published the Sony and Bowers video that the comment section was going to get swamped by people writing, what about the Focal Batisse? Because the French call them Batisse, and I call them Bathys. But I guess, you know, the French are right. It's their company. It's their product. So I'm probably going to call them Bathys or Batisse throughout this video. But anyway, so <laughs> yeah, sure enough, the comment section for the Sony and Bowers video was loaded with people asking about, yeah, the Focal Batiste. So I thought I need to do something about this. So as soon as I got back from Malaga, I went to my local Focal slash name dealer here in Berlin because they had one of those fancy Focal powered by name stores. And I bought a pair of the Batiste. And today I want to talk about them. So, this is the carry case for the Batiste. It's kind of a bit like the Sony one, really. I mean, it's again, nothing really remarkable or, or special about it. Zip lock, and there are some cables in here, you can see that. This is where the Batiste lay flat. Now, picking up the headphones again, these weigh 350 grams. That's quite a bit heavier than the Bowers and the, the Sony. This bit here, this is called the yoke. That's made from magnesium to be super light. And then I think this sort of trim on the ear cup is made from aluminium or aluminum if you're in the USA. Now on the head, these don't feel quite as tight as the Bowers and Wilkins PX7 S2. I think Focal have judged the side clamping force a little bit better than Bowers did, but only just. So the Batiste, the Bathys are slightly more comfortable for me than the Bowers and Wilkins as a glasses wearer. But the Sony, the Sony WH-1000XM5 is still the king of comfort in my book. It's more comfortable than the Bowers and Wilkins, more comfortable than the Focal for longer periods. Now, can the new Focal, Batiste, Bathys, can they match the Sony on their killer quality? That's phone calls, right? being able to make crystal clear phone calls? The answer is yes, yes they can. I was actually quite surprised by this. And no, I didn't have any problems with connection stability between my Google Pixel 6, the Android phone, and the Focal headphones, as I did occasionally with the Bowers and Wilkins, but never with the Sony. The app itself is quite a minimal affair. It gives us access to a five band EQ, it gives us access to transparency mode, but two active noise cancelling modes, one called soft, one called silent. Silent is much more effective than soft. I don't quite know why you'd need two different noise cancelling modes. Maybe it's because when you're out in the street and you don't want to be completely cut off from traffic noise, so you want the, the soft one rather than the silent one. Another surprise for me was that in silent mode, the Batiste are more effective at cancelling external noise than both the Sony and the Bowers and Wilkins. But it's also worth noting that the Batiste have the better passive isolation. They seal around the ear better than the Sony and the Bowers and Wilkins. So maybe that contributes to their effectiveness with internal DSP based active noise cancellation. But on transparency mode, I, I think they're all sort of much of a muchness. You know, the Sony is just the same pretty much as the Bowers is the same pretty much as the Focal. But I'm not so worried about transparency mode being really true to life. I mean, I guess it is most of all with Apple headphones. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But as long as I can hear what's going on, transparency mode is 
good enough generally with all these headphones and I have zero complaints about transparency mode with the Batisse slash Bathys. Why do I say Bathys? Well, it's because I see the word Bathys and I want to complete it to Bathysphere, which is like a diving bell, right? Which also reminds me of a great song, an early song by Smog called Bathysphere. And it's a very basic tune, but it just, it just kills me every time I hear it. Controlling these earphones is purely a, an all button affair. So on the left ear cup, we have noise cancelling on and off to transparency mode. On the right ear cup, we have on and off with a three position switch, which I'll come back to later. There's also volume up, volume down, and then a play pause in the middle. Now what Focal have done is they've recessed that play pause button, which is different to what Bowers and Wilkins did because Bowers and Wilkins raised it and ribbed it. Now I prefer the Focal implementation, it's a little bit easier to find, but I really do miss the sort of simple touch control on the right ear cup of the Sony whenever I use headphones like the Bowers, like the Focal Batisse. Let's talk about sound quality. This is a big sounding headphone, the Focal. It really does, for me, have a larger head stage than any other headphone mentioned in this video. It's also ever so slightly warm sounding. There's, I think, a slight push in the mid bass to kind of give it that sort of woody richness or give voices that woody richness. This might be a good time actually to mention the driver because the driver is Focal's M-shaped driver. Its profile is M-shaped. I believe the driver is derived from their wired headphone, the Celeste. Is that how you say it? Or Celeste? Celeste. But the mechanism or the sort of the housing itself is smaller and the magnet is smaller. And that driver is made in France, in the factory. I've been to the factory, we made a, a video about it, or rather I made a video about it. I took my camera there. I'm not as good as Olaf or as Jana, but I gave it my best shot in, in sort of shooting a factory tour. So that's on this YouTube channel. I'll link it somewhere in the description box below. So yeah, the driver is made in France. However, the rest of the headphone is made in China. But back to sound quality, there's also a little bit of extra caffeination in the treble. But I wouldn't say that that treble is what you'd call incisive or slices through. There's just a bit more pep up there. Bringing music into the picture, you know, because that's why we do this. Listening to even just the first two minutes of Lamb Chop's new song, Whatever Mortal, we notice that big head staging, but we also notice, I guess, yes, yeah, significantly better clarity compared to the Bowers and especially the Sony. And we get terrific levels of detail retrieval and we get a nice amount of dynamic flair, but not too much. And that really helps acoustic guitars sound very natural, much more natural than they do on the Sony and a little bit more natural than they do on the PX7S2. So the Sony headphone really isn't in the running here when it comes to sound quality. The, the Focal Bathys or Batiste is far, far better in terms of clarity and detail and yeah, just overall sort of music satisfaction. But if we compare it to the PX7S2 from Bowers and Wilkins, play something like The Mercy Seat from Nick Cave's Idiot Prayer. That's his sort of solo piano concert at the, was it Alexandra Palace? I think it was, during sort of COVID lockdowns. The piano, as heard through the Focal, to me sounds more believable, slightly, than it does through the Bowers and Wilkins PX7S2. I also want to give specific mention to the way Focal have implemented the sub bass in this headphone, because I think they've done a great job in that it's present, but it's not overbearing, and that it's well separated, but it's not disjointed. And I had a kind of a bit of a weird time listening to a whole bunch of old 90s releases from The Beloved. Now The Beloved, oh, this is a kind of an interesting band actually. They started life and they made one album called Where It Is, where they wanted to be the Smiths. And then 19, well, the late 80s happened, and in the UK, what they called the second summer of love and the arrival of ecstasy, the drug. And I think that really transformed the beloved sound into them becoming more of a dance pop act. And that's what we got on 1990s Happiness. And there were a whole bunch of singles that 
came off happiness were released separately. Things like the sun rising, I think was their biggest hit, but your love takes me higher. And in the last couple of years, the Beloved's catalog has been, I don't know whether it's been reorganized, revitalized, or basically sorted out so it's on streaming services. So I went through all of the Your Love Takes Me Higher 12 inches. There were four of them, right? Four of them. There's like four or five different Sun Rising 12 inches. So loads of different remixes. And this is how I heard the sub bass action from the Focal Batiste. You know, I had a great time doing that, both from a sort of a nostalgic point of view, but also in hearing what this Bluetooth noise cancelling headphone can do in that sub bass. So in case you hadn't guessed it, this Focal Batiste is a much better headphone than the Sony WH-1000XM5. It's a slightly better headphone than the Bowers & Wilkins PX7S2. As well it should be because it's almost, well, yeah, almost twice the price. It sells for 699 euros in Europe. Olaf just raised his eyebrows. He's like, oh my God, yeah. Now, if you've seen my Sony versus Bowers video, you'll know that even though I thought the Bowers & Wilkins was a much better sounding headphone, I still picked up the Sony more often to go outside the house. So how does the Focal Batiste fit into all of this? Would I pick it up over the Sony? And the answer is more complicated than a simple black and white yes or no. Because if I was taking a long train ride or going on a plane, yeah, I would take the Focal. But if I was just nipping up to my local cafe for a coffee, no, I'd still take the Sony. Now, why is that? Well, it's because of the Focal's bulk. This is a big headphone. It feels kind of heavy on the head, but it's more than that, right? Because I think I feel more self-conscious wearing the Focal Batiste than I do any other Bluetooth headphone. Because yeah, it, it's, it's big and it's bulky. The ear cups are large. The logo on the side is illuminated, right? It looks kind of blingy. Now, you might love that, and I kind of do, but to be fair to Focal, in the app, you can dim that logo illumination or turn it off altogether. But the whole thing feels very sort of ostentatious for my own personal taste. I'm not a showy dresser. I'm not that kind of person. I know many of you might be, but I'm, I'm certainly not. So this is the thing about headphones, as I've said previously, they are audio clothing. We have to wear them. So they really have to fit in with our style and the Focal don't for me as much as say the Apple AirPods Max, which in this country, in Germany, sell for similar money, 649 euros. And at 386 grams, the Apple are heavier than the Focal. But to me, they don't feel it. I think Apple have done a better job of weight distribution. I mean, a lot of it is borne by the headband. And I know this because when I'm walking along with the, the AirPods Max on, and this is my big, complaint about them is that it feels like the ear cups are not clamping sideways onto my head as much as I'd like. So they kind of swing just a little bit and that's irritating. I don't love that. In every other respect, I really, really like those, yeah, the Apple AirPods Max. I like the comfort factor they give me and they have a much lower profile ear cup. They feel like a more discreet full size Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphone. Visually discreet, that's what I should have said. But when I'm walking along with the Batiste, I don't get that sort of swinging movement from the ear cups, which is great because the, the side clamping force is much more robust than the Apple's. I'd also say that the Focals go toe to toe very easily on noise cancellation with the Apple's. Like to me, it's very hard to say which one is better with yeah, cancelling out external sounds. And then I did a phone call test. I phoned Jana in New York and we had a long conversation as I did with the Bowers versus the Sony. Now I expected going into this that the Apple would romp home because I've used the Apple AirPods Max for phone calls quite a lot and they're amazing. 
But what I didn't expect was Jana to tell me that she preferred the sound of my voice when using the Focals more than when I used the Apple AirPods Max. She said that the, the Focals sounded more natural with voices, whereas with the AirPods Max, they were more tipped up towards the upper mid range. So she could hear my words more clearly because the speech area of the frequency response was not more emphasized, but for her clearer, but that she just preferred the sound of the Focal. And in terms of phone call quality, I had no issues with the Focal as far as Jana was telling me. She said like, no, I can hear you just as easily through, through the Focal as I can through the AirPods Max. So yeah, that was a surprise. And that sort of carries over into sound quality comparisons. So on Prince's Sign of the Times, we noticed the Batiste's fuller sounding mid bass, which by contrast with the AirPods Max can sound a little bit sucked out. Now you wouldn't notice it in isolation. I certainly didn't until I did the comparison. And you might not notice it at all if you listen to like electronic music by say somebody like Shed or CJ Bolland, because that upper mid bass richness doesn't really factor in as much into that music as it does say with Prince's music or with Smog and Bill Callahan and yeah, I guess more acoustic music, I think really benefits from that sort of richer mid bass, which isn't there on the AirPods Max. And playing Smog's Bathysphere, I did notice that the AirPods Max gives us more presence region excitement than the Batisse, and therefore the illusion of greater sort of instrument separation. So the Focal sounded a little bit more sort of, well, I won't say congealed, because they don't sound congealed, but it just, sounds more like a musical whole rather than the AirPods Max sort of like pulling apart the strands of music. And then I played some LCD sound system. This is happening. I think that's their third album from 2010. Now the AirPods Max gives us more sort of air and ambient information. It's more overt in that respect. But here's the interesting thing is I think the Batiste are slightly better at sorting out some of the more complex arrangements on that album. So even though the, the apples give us the illusion of better separation, I think, yeah, the Focals, they don't ask our brain to do as much work in sorting out what's going on. I think that's what's happening. So is there a best for sound quality here between the Focal Batiste and the Apple AirPods Max? I think for most people, it will be the Focal. However, if you listen to a lot of drum and bass, techno, hip hop, modern pop, you might lean towards the Apple AirPods Max. But the Focal also have a little ace up their sleeve. You remember that three position sort of on off switch that I mentioned earlier? Well, that's on off, but also you can move it into something called DAC mode, which allows you to connect the headphones directly over USB to a computer. And yeah, for me, they sound a little bit better going DAC direct than they do relying on Bluetooth. But I think that's really missing the point because I don't think many people will do that. I think that's a marginal use case. And one thing I love about Bluetooth headphones with noise cancellation, I've mentioned before about how I love how active noise cancellation brings obviously the environmental noise down so you don't have to crank them as hard, which is good for your hearing. But the other thing I really love about Bluetooth headphones is that they remove the need to kind of fuss over what DAC and what amp or what portable player you're gonna need to drive a pair of wired headphones. And they also obviously remove the wire. So I think, as I've said before, there is a bright future for this particular type of product, but also this class of product. Like we might call it like Uber Premium. But, you know, I think that the Uber Premium category of Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphones is about to explode. 
I think we're going to see far more of these come to market. Obviously, I haven't tried the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 yet, but the Mark Levinson number 5909, which sells for a thousand euros, I think it sounds a little bit more balanced in its sort of tonality than the Focal. It isn't so kind of overtly either warm or zippy in the top end. It doesn't have that sort of sort of richer mid bass because I, I don't think the Focal is what you would say is flat from a perception point of view. But the Mark Levinson for me is. I'd also say that the Mark Levinson give us another level of transparency again over and above the Focal. They also give us more micro dynamic flair. Their top end is a little bit more revealing. It's a bit more delicate and finessed. By contrast, the Focal, it really isn't the most micro dynamically charged headphone I've ever heard. So yeah, I think the Focal is a good sweet spot between the Sony and the Bowers and Wilkins PX7 as two and that Mark Levinson. It sort of sits right in the middle price wise. It sits right in the middle, I think, performance wise. And even though I've kind of been a bit hard on the Focal in terms of its look and its feel, I still prefer how it looks and how it feels to the Mark Levinson. So yeah, I'm very impressed by what Focal have done here with the Batiste. I think it's a great sounding headphone. It's a real proper luxury product. Far more than I think the Sony and the Bowers. Far more, actually even than the Apple AirPods Max. I think they're quite plain by comparison. I think that's the, the flip side of you know, that, having that sort of ostentatious look, is that they, they just look more opulent. They're more of an aspirational person's sort of headphone, I think. And the sound quality is definitely there to match that aspiration and, and that budget as well. So if you like my video about the Focal Batiste slash Bathys, then please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards headphones, Bluetooth headphones, noise cancelling headphones, then please consider giving this channel a subscribe. <laughs> I kind of messed that up, didn't I? And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Obviously, there are many, many different possibilities and permutations with having so many headphones here of a similar category knocking about. I've tried to give you as much information as is humanly possible in this video. If I didn't cover it, I'm really sorry, but I'm unlikely to have any sort of follow-up information for you in the comments because everything that I discovered, I put in this video. So there is no more. So it really is what you see is what you get. And I hope you understand that.